I don't have a ton of nice things. I had one really nice pair of sunglasses, these Oliver People sunglasses that I like prided myself on. I kept them in a special area in my little kitchen and I'd take them out if I knew I was going to be in the sun. That little brat took my Oliver People sunglasses and brought them to Mexico. And I swear that's why Olivia fell in love with them because of those <laughs> damn sunglasses. Welcome to your mom. Your mom podcast. Your mom's podcast. This isn't any podcast. This is your mother's podcast. My mom's podcast. Nah, dude, she's your mom. With Ashley Allison and Lisa McCaffrey. Your mom is a podcast. Shut up, dude. Welcome to your mom. Yes, we are back. Ashley Adamson, Pac-12 Network studio host and mom of two Young children here in San Francisco, my better half, Lisa McCaffrey, mom of four adult boys who all play or coach football, most notably Christian McCaffrey, who is now playing for the Niners. He keeps scoring touchdowns and Lisa keeps getting shown on national television, dropping F-bombs. It's a beautiful thing. It's been a great trade, I think, for everybody. Ever, yeah. Hey, maybe I started a new tradition out there. I know. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Uh, as most people probably know, speaking of Christian, he is dating Olivia Culpo, the 2012 Miss Universe, former Miss Rhode Island. She's amazing. I remember meeting her at your birthday dinner in LA and being like, oh my God, that's not just an Instagram filter. Like she's actually yeah. that perfect. It's and so annoying. It's so annoying. It's like flawlessness. Yeah. And she's also just completely delightful and wonderful. And I just have to say, good job, Christian. I don't know what he's bringing to the table, but whatever, <laughs> whatever he's doing. I don't, I don't know how he landed that, but <laughs> congratulations. Probably you. That's, that's what I'm going to guess. I bet she met you first and was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Do you remember when Christian first called to tell you about Olivia? Do you have that memory? Um, I think I was, yeah, I think I was on a random cruise in Europe. So bizarre I got on this two friends. And yeah. And he called me he goes, mom, I'm going on a date with this girl. I'm like, what? They're like, Olivia, cool. I'm like, I know, I knew who she was. I didn't, you know, I wasn't a follower right. or anything, but I knew who she was. So of course my two friends and I jumped down, jump, grab our phone. And we're like figuring out, Oh my gosh, wow. She's beautiful. So I'm like, well, try to look nice Christian. And I remember we, we were zooming with zooming with him or FaceTiming with him. And he was trying to figure out what to wear. Oh my God. Cause well, you know, when you see she's really into fashion yeah. and she's an influencer. And so he's it's like, what do I wear? And so we were out helping him and he was getting frustrated. He was, Oh yeah, I was, it was, he was very preoccupied with, Oh my gosh, what to wear, not to look like a fool. Wait, so. that's adorable. Cause yeah. I think we see these big celebrity couples and we think like, <laughs> Oh yeah. But just the fact that he's FaceTiming his mom and <laughs> his mom's girlfriends being like, yeah, I don't know what to wear. I, well, whatever the outfit was, it must have been good because it obviously they've been dating yeah. for three years. So, I remember, yeah. Well, I guess I don't know. We have to, maybe we should ask her. I'll ask her next time I see her. Yeah. Do you remember that? What do you think? Uh, well, and for our listeners who maybe don't know Olivia, she and her sisters, Aurora and Sophie, just launched a reality TV show. It's awesome. It's on TLC. It's called The Culpo Sisters. And it basically just follows the three of them around and showcases their lives in LA as influencers. Is that essentially? Yes, pretty the, much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. Yes, yep, and yep. Someone approached them and wanted to do a reality show. And they were like, okay, it's, it's well, I know Olivia's like done a million things in her life. And she's like, something I haven't done. I haven't tried. So all right. And and she wanted to work with her family too. That was really yeah. important to her. She well, it's cool because you get you get a chance now. I mean, and I think that she said it like she's gotten time to be with her family more than ever before because of the filming and some of the different things. So I, I guess to that point, you got to know Olivia and Sophie in a very real way. I don't know why the producers didn't call you. They should have, or maybe they did, but you guys all lived together during COVID 93 days in quarantine, 93 days in quarantine. Yep. Um, it was Sophia and Olivia were the two culpas and then wow. all of us and some other people too. Yeah. There was 10 of us living in my house for 93 days. And let's just say when everyone moved out, we did a huge renovation. We needed to repaint. We needed new lights. We needed a new roof. New drywall stuff. guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the reality show that the world probably needed. Oh, uh, we, and we, yeah. And of course living, oh, the best is watching coach Ed wake up in the morning and he just, he'd, he'd walk in the bathroom and he's like, yeah, they're filming like a makeup thing in there. I, I can't really use my bathroom because we had really good lighting in the bathroom. 
And then he'd wake up. He's like, I just wanted a bowl of cereal. And there's people oh. doing a, a cooking show live oh, in my kitchen. Him. But it was, oh, it was so good. So well, good. I guess then, okay, before we bring Susan Culpo on, because Peter, Olivia's dad, and Susan, Olivia's mom are in the show. They are absolutely amazing, like oh, totally relatable parents. So good. I loved when so the good. line when Susan was like, they call Olivia an influencer, but we don't know because we're not influenced by it. We don't know what an influencer is. Yeah, we're, we're not influenced. Know what they yeah, do. What <laughs> uh, but Susan is going to join us and I'm, I'm so pumped to talk to her. But just before we bring her on, what, what has it been like for you is knowing that family in the way that you do and the girls in the way that you do? Like, what is it like watching a reality show? Did they get it right? Like, what's what's? Yes. Like? Yeah. No, it's I mean. I'm like enthralled with it because I'm like wondering, but I kind of know what they're going to say because I I do know their lives and I know about them. And it's, and it's, I, I love the dichotomy of their parents and them. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny because they're like from Rhode Island and they just, you know, live their life. They have a little farm. They, they opened up some restaurants there, you know, dad's a huge entrepreneur, like opened up these restaurants and mom's just like, she, well, she's a concert, a concert violinist or viola. She plays a viola and she's, oh my gosh, she, with her and music is kind of like with us in sports. She's She's just, that's her thing. That's what she's, she does all the time. Oh, that's what she does. And she's very passionate about it. And it's so fun to talk to her about that. But her parents are just so down to earth. Her mom just loves to be in the kitchen cooking. And and then like, when they go out to LA, their life in LA is just so different from their life in Rhode Island. And it's funny and it's great. And they, they, they both are learning from each other. But she, those parents, I love them because they've kept all five of those children so grounded. Um, and I just appreciate that. And I'm thankful for that it's the dichotomy of like the way they live. And then the way the, the LA, the LA girls live is just, it's so funny to me. It's just, it's perfect. It's, it, it, is. Cre it creates really good content and I love watching it. So funny. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll go into it. But Jackson is on the show too. That's Olivia's assistant who I introduced Olivia to. I'm very proud of this fact because they've been working together for, oh my gosh, three years now or two, two and a half years and their best friends, which I knew they would be. But Jackson is my best friend here, son who I, you know, Christian there and the, they were in the same class in high school and they they were, they were good friends too. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this would be the perfect job for him. He had just gotten fired only because of, because of COVID they loved him. They didn't want to fire him at his awesome PR firm in New York, came back home and he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do, what he was going to do. And I'm like, Hey, he loves to travel. He's incredibly organized. He's, he's so good at, um, like booking plans and traveling and, and setting up a house. And he's just, he's exactly what she needed. So it's worked out really well. So I'm I love it. He's kind of low key. One of like the stars of the show. He my, is. I hope opinion. he, I hope they um, yeah. bring him in more because he more. is yeah. naturally just a really fun and funny person. He's like the life of the party everywhere he goes. Yeah. He's, everywhere awesome. He goes. he's awesome. Okay. Well, Susan is our guest today and obviously excited to talk about the show and what it was like to be a part of the show. She's got her own incredible story. You alluded to it, Lisa, though. She's got a big musical background. She's been a professional viola. Yes. It's a little different like than the violin. Yeah. Similar to the violin, but it's just a, a, a little bit different. And she's magnificent on it. Oh, she's so good. Amazing. It's fun to hear her play. There she is, Susan Culpo, kind enough to join us from her home in Rhode Island. Susan, I, I just am so excited to talk to you. There's a million things to chat with you about, but I want to start with, we just asked Lisa when she first got the call from Christian about Olivia. Do you remember when Olivia first called you to tell you about Christian? I actually, no, I actually saw it. I saw her holding hands with Christian in Mexico somewhere. Oh, and, yeah. um, and, you know, and I thought, oh my God, uh, what can I say? I, I you were know, you I'm, were you like, oh, shoot, another, why didn't another, you pick, like a better player, like uh, somebody hotter, I don't know, or, or like a rock star. Were you uh, no, well, I, I will, I, you know, none of those things. I certainly didn't, I mean, I didn't know who he was. What can I say? I didn't, but, um, you know, since his mom's here and everything, I love the kid. No, but I really do. But again. No, I had no idea. That's how I find out most things. Isn't that pathetic? I know the trip you're talking or about, Susan. They were in Mexico. It was like their first trip. And that little, I want to say a bad word, that little brat stole. Okay, I don't have a ton of nice things. I had one really nice pair of sunglasses, these Oliver People sunglasses that I like prided myself on. I kept them in a special area in my little kitchen and I'd take them out if I knew I was going to be in the sun. That little brat took my Oliver people's sunglasses and brought them to Mexico. And I swear that's why Olivia fell in love with them because of those damn sunglasses. <laughs> Not kidding. To this day, I remember losing them, thinking I lost them, kicking myself, mad at myself. And then same thing. I saw that in those Mexico spread, whatever. I'm like, 
that little brat, he's wearing my sunglasses. And then supposedly she fell in love with him. It's because of my Oliver people sunglasses. <laughs> That's why they got together. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Oh. Obviously, it was the sunglasses. Yeah, oh, that's oh, the thing God. about being, you know, like a celebrity. Like you can't borrow your mom's stuff <laughs> and think that you're not going to get photographed in it. Okay, then I want to hear. Then let's start with how you two then met, because there's always like that first awkward meeting of the parents that everybody has has been through. But I feel like I can't imagine that anything was awkward when it involves the two of you because you're both so fabulous. So well, no, Susan, I'll I, start with you. What was yeah, your okay. memory? So of it? the first time I met Lisa, I walked into Olivia's house, and Lisa has on these kind of little short shorts and an and outfit that looks like Olivia would wear it. And I'm thinking, who what? is this Hesse? But I mean, she looked great. Okay. She no, looked great in them. No, you did. And then I was told her luggage had gotten stolen and she had to squeeze into Olivia's clothes, <laughs> which was hysterical. And she was oh. such a sport about it. I had no choice. <laughs> well, if it happened to me, I would have to wear the robes in the house. <laughs> she could at least wear something. So um, anyway, that was yes. my introduction to her. And, um, you know, I just thought it was pretty sweet. Again, though, Lisa, because it does say something about her, she had a fancy piece of luggage. Okay. That would never have happened to me. Okay. No one will steal yeah, that's my senior luggage. Lisa. That's true. Uh, Wait. Yeah, yeah. She's kind okay. of the, we're, We already have now two. The sunglasses. And, and okay, okay. Uh, let, me, let me tell you yep. why I had a fancy pair of luggage. This is all another. We're gonna have to do this on the Christmas <laughs> one. We're gonna do a Christmas special about Christmas gifts. This was a huge makeup gift that makeup that because Ed gave me because his original gift. You ready for this? Everybody sitting. I don't know if I should break it out now. Oh, yeah. Was a freaking gift card. <laughs> you give your wife a gift card. I I literally open up and I'm crying. A tear. <laughs> how much was it for? How much? What? How much was it for? I guess that kind of matters. Oh my god! Not enough. Not enough. Nope. Heck no. Never. Not enough. Where no, was it too? I got the where fancy was, luggage was... later on. That's why for my birthday, two months later. Oh yeah. Are you kidding me? It's so funny that you should mention that because I have a friend once that her husband gave her when they first came out a Roomba. You know those. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's. Uh, she was so upset, and the only yeah. thing I kept on thinking was, God, I would love one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she was to me. That's the ultimate Christmas gift, but not Sorry. for Christmas. Oh that's yeah. Christmas. Oh no, Lisa. Any I'm getting time. you one. Oh my gosh, Susan, I didn't realize Lisa, you needed. Oh, I've, I've, gone I've gone through two. I've gone through two. They just get stuck under your couch and they go around the dog fur. But at the time, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Better than a gift card, either oh, way. Better anyway, than a gift card. Okay, so Lisa, what opinion. was your memory of meeting Susan? I remember looking back now. First of all, I wasn't awkward, but I remember being mortified that I'm wearing these like, <laughs> oh my gosh, teeny tiny clothes. I have no business wearing. And I'm like, oh, nice to meet you. And just please don't think that I normally dress like this because I am i can't fit in these clothes and I shouldn't be wearing them. But I had nothing else. So yeah, that was a, a treat. I actually still have that outfit here. It's so funny. Oh my gosh. They had, yeah. Anyway. You should have um, worn it for this podcast. Yeah, I should have like worn it. I forgot. I totally yeah. forgot about that. But I just remember being so comfortable right away and being like, oh, thank God. Because I had, I remember when I remember being super, super nervous because I had um, Sophia and Olivia in quarantine for 93 days. And of course we talked about your family and, you know, and our family and growing up and what it was like. And I remember Sophia told me two things. She said that you had a thing about people wearing yellow, never wear yellow. You don't think girls look good in yellow. I was dying. And I had just ordered a yellow jacket. So whatever. And then <laughs> two, don't ever soak a cast iron pan. I remember those two things, a bit of advice. So I remember being, well, I'm intimidated. I'm like, oh goodness. So, but then I met you and loved you. And like, you guys are so salt of the earth down to earth. And I was so happy and oh my gosh. And then fast forward to meeting out in Charlotte a couple of weeks for a couple of weeks and you bringing your pizza your, yes, your luggage is not going to get stolen. That is for sure. <laughs> Pretty bad. These you know, of, I kind of was in it. They feel it. Yeah. You know? I kind of forgot about the quarantine thing because yeah. that was really their introduction. Like, oh my God, my, not only Olivia, but Sophie is at the McCaffrey's house for quarantine. And, and I was so jealous because I have to say they had a blast. They had a blast. I mean, you know, there were so many bad things that came out of that, but I have to say, I was jealous. They looked like they were having a good time. 
I was living for those updates on social media. Like this was before Lisa and I like really reconnected. And I'm just like, what? This looks like the most fun quarantine of all time. Right. We we figured if we're going to be doing this, we're going to make it fun. We're going to yeah. force ourselves. But just so you know, you know, on social media, you only post the highlights. There was definitely yeah. some behind the scenes cleanups and fights and whatnot. But there it was it was looking back. It was an incredible way to quarantine. I'll say that. So, oh, yeah, memorable. Really no doubt yeah, about it. And like I said, girls. Yes. That that should have been its own reality show in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So Susan, when when your girls first came to you and and to your husband Peter and said, Hey, we want to do a reality show, what do you think? What what was your response? I had um I, it made me actually very nervous. I had like knots in my stomach. And my husband, just the opposite. He's like, How many people get this opportunity? Oh, let's just try. Who cares? So he had such a good attitude. It was hard for me to you know, say, oh, no, I don't want to be involved. So I, I just went along with it. I n really don't watch that kind of television, generally speaking. If if you have an English accent, chances are I've watched that on TV. If it's like no English the accent. British baking really show. That's really I watched the great British baking show for <laughs> your recommendation, and I'm obsessed with it now. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, I, I don't want to you know, I don't want to sound like I'm snobby about television, but you know, it, it was a little bit, oh my God, what are we getting into? And then of course, everyone mentions the, the, the people that I'm not supposed to mention, the Kardashians. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I, and, and I, I honestly never watched that either. So I, I didn't know, but I know that people generally have opinions about the show. So, um, it made me a little nervous, but I do have to say, when we filmed it and, and I was with my girls and we get to spend time together. And that to me is just, it was fun. It was tiring. And the girls did it much more and for a much longer time than my husband and I did. But um, no matter what, it, it kind of gathered us together. Uh, except the the one thing I have to also say that I didn't like about it is my son, Peter. I have five children and my son, Peter's not <laughs> been in, you wouldn't know that he, he's alive. Okay. That's a little sad, but they will introduce. And there are, you know, a few of us and, uh, you know, I'm sure that th there's a, that they know what they're doing, but that did make me a little upset. Yeah. Pete, and Peter is married to Katie, who I absolutely love. I met them in quarantine too. They came yep, right. over the and they have a baby. Oh my gosh. Literally. It's like a dream baby. The easiest baby in the play. Like I don't, I've never heard her cry. Yeah. She's lovely. She's lovely. She's a year old now. So Peter so and Katie lived in Colorado. Uh, when during uh, the worst place that they could have moved to was during, you know, quarantine and all that Colorado. But anyway, they're back in Rhode Island now. I yes. love that. And I, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think whatever your expectations of something are, usually something's a little bit different. So even though the reality show is supposed to give like the full behind the scenes look, if you pull back the curtain, I guess, even further than that, like, what was it like the process of filming it? You talk about being able to be with them, but was there anything that surprised you or that was different than kind of what you anticipated from, from what you thought uh, the, the, the sheer number of hours that these people work, a 16 hour day is normal for them. It's amazing to me. And, you know, they're young, they have children, they have a family. Yeah. And I look at those people, you know, with the cameras in their hands and think, don't you need to go home? <laughs> isn't, isn't there something else that you could be doing with your time um, that they're totally into it and they're freelancers like I am. So I kind of understand the business. They'll talk about, oh, I used to do that show. Oh God, that was terrible. You know, it's kind of fun to see the behind the scenes yeah. conversations. There are a lot of them. It, it takes a lot to produce a show. Another thing I didn't realize. And, uh, you know, they were lovely. That was the one thing. Uh, well, okay. One television show that I love and they don't have English accents was the <laughs> office. And I mm. kind of feel like I'm on the office <laughs> when I talk <laughs> to those people. I feel like I'm just, you know, it's my friend on the, at the camera and I can just say exactly what I that's want. That's a really good way to look at it. Well, I love that. And yeah. that's a testament to whoever the producer is interviewing you, because as someone who interviews people, that's the goal is to get them to feel like we're friends and we're just chatting and you're supposed to be comfortable. And so that's, yeah, a testament to them. And you guys do, you come off so, I mean, just exactly as you are, like so relatable, so down to earth, so delightful. I just love the family dynamic of everybody giving each other a hard time. It just, it feels, you can tell that you guys are a connected unit. And for a family of five kids, there were so many moments in it. And even just in the first two episodes that stood out to me, do you guys know what the episodes are going to be before they come out? Like, have you, has, have they screened them or is, are you seeing it for the first time? 
oh, we see it for the first time. The only thing I know is my son, Peter, will be introduced to see episode five. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay, so really quick for the listeners, there you have five kids. Yes, I do. Peter, Aurora, mm-hmm. Olivia's in the middle, mm-hmm. and Gus, who's yeah. an incredible musician himself, like you, mm-hmm. and then um, Sophia. Yes. Is yeah. the baby. Yes. Yeah. So just so you know. So yeah, five. And Olivia's in the middle. She's the peacemaker. And I love yeah. that your husband said that if they could go back and do it again, that you guys would have had like five more kids. <laughs> it, it, and that is true. You know, I, I oh. only because it wasn't, it, it's so funny. I go to, you know, babysit or be around my grandchildren and I'm exhausted. But when I had my five children, it wasn't that difficult for me. It just wasn't. It was, it was a joy. It truly was a joy. They were pretty good kids. So I just have to count my blessings that they were healthy that they didn't have extremely bad habits. Not They were average. I didn't expect them to be above average. I really mean that too. Mm. I, I had, I'm not going to say I had low expectations, but I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't that pushy. I just wanted them to try to play music because that's what I knew. And they all did at different degrees of, you know, you know, different, some are more talented than others. And that was fine. They, they liked going to school. I think I was really lucky about that. I picked decent schools for them too, I think. That, that, that was, um, I, I don't know. What can I say? My kids were, were really good. They were easy children. I absolutely love that. I was just going to say that is not a perspective that you hear from parents very often, especially in the world where everyone's just trying to get their kid to be a star. Mm-hmm. Like to just say, Hey, I want, I'm not anticipating that you guys are going to be any, I just want you to be, be kids, be, yeah, be, be kids, yeah. be normal. So you're have basically, a normal you're, life, the like, anti, you're the anti-pageant mom. Yes. And your daughter went on to win Miss Universe. Now, yeah. wait, how, please tell everybody the story of how Olivia even got into pageants because that, the, your take on it, I just- Because I think most yeah. people would see yeah. what your girls are doing and think, oh, I they imagine a her, her, they the had a mom who you're probably like tried to push it, which was not the case. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of people have heard the story. When Olivia said she was going to do, you know, go out for Miss Rhode Island, she was at the time, I think, 19 years old. And I just just said, Olivia, it's the dumbest thing you could ever do. Why waste your time? What are you going to sit on the back of a convertible and uh, and wave to people in Fourth of July parades? It's like, you don't you don't want this. It's it's silly. And that was wrong on my part. I learned later. First of all, it's disrespectful to people that do do it and, and that really, I don't know, they have a certain courage, I think, or, or they, they're they willing to put themselves out there. And you know, that, that should not be looked down upon. That was wrong of me, but <laughs> for my daughter, Olivia, I just didn't yeah. think that, that, that they would even think that she was pretty. She was different than those kind of girls or something like that. So I'm completely wrong about that. But anyway, she did very stubbornly go into it. I remember she wanted me to buy her a gown. It's like, no way. <laughs> no, you know, so she did something, rent the runway when it first came out. It was very inexpensive. And, you know, then she ended up winning. Once she won, I was still skeptical because I thought she's in college. I went right up to the woman in charge. I said, you know, Olivia's in college right now. And she said, don't worry. We know that she's in school. We we work around it. It's going to be fine. And then another man said, you know, she could make it all the way to the top. And I remember looking at her like, yeah, oh yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, and she did. So it was just, I was I was wrong. And and then I, I actually tell this story in the show, but uh, then Olivia was asked to sit on the back of a convertible for the oldest parade in Rhode Island. It's the Bristol Parade. My brother lives in Bristol. And they let us sit in an Escalade and back. And I'm in the Escalade and I'm watching people go crazy for Olivia because Rhode Island had never won a Miss, you know, USA at the time she was. And I'm sitting in the back of that Escalade seeing people I've known and or complete strangers crying <laughs> because it was so beautiful watching how much people loved my daughter. So live and learn. You That's know? Amazing. Yeah. That's that just awesome. gives me chills. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Did she ever say, mom, I told you? <laughs> I, you know, you know, it's so funny because that's the thing about Olivia and or being, you know, her or the middle child. No, she, she's she's good. She is. She 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 knows me and she knows that's the way I felt because I I really did think it was something silly. But 
I learned something too. So that's all. Which is what? That you have to let your kids do what they want, really. Experiment. You can't be the person to say, oh, no, that's stupid. That was what I take away from it, that that I have to be open to um, things that they want to try, like reality TV shows. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So basically, you and I, were not going to be filming that sex tape with Christian and Olivia. We're not going to do that. Oh. That's out. See, uh, oh, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Fun. Joking. That's episode six. Is that yeah. <laughs> That's the end of the show. Everyone tune in. That's the cliffhanger. <laughs> the finale. Oh, Kidding. my God. Well, I will tell you, Lisa makes that joke, but we were... There was something about, I think it was actually, we were joking about something like that offline when we were recording a podcast, I don't know, two months ago. And we clipped it off because it was so funny and we were going to post it. And Lisa was like, let me just, I, I don't know. I It's fine with me, but let me just text <laughs> Olivia and make sure that this isn't. And Olivia, and we've told this story before on the podcast, but she wrote back like, oh my God, I think it's hilarious. And life is way too short to be boring and care what other people think. And the number of times that I have like thought about that sentence in my brain since Lisa said that to me, I just like, I want to thank Olivia because it's true. Like if we could all just not really give a shit about what other people think of us and just like enjoy your life. Cause guess what? Like most people is... are thinking about themselves at the end of the day. That's yeah, what Olivia yeah. gave me too. Like, you know, they may, some people may rip off a mean tweet, but they don't care anymore. And so then other people are like listening. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. This is so bad. But nobody cares. Nobody cares except the, nobody Everyone's cares that thinking about themselves. Yeah. yeah. And it's true. And I've learned those things from Olivia also. It's like the kind of people that want to immediately say something nasty. Well, why? They, you know, get a life. Right. Yeah. Olivia, Olivia has a great really take. She's like, I actually feel sorry for those people. I and mean, what a miserable person to be sitting there and like writing mean things about someone. Who could, who does that? You have to think of that person must be a really sad person or really hurting inside to do that. And I'm like, okay, Olivia, you're like, you're half my age and you're way smarter. I'm like, what? <laughs> She's learned the hard way, though, because yeah. you don't read those things because yeah, we don't. It, it's just not, not sure. No, she's she's amazing. She yeah. is amazing. Well, and one of the lines that I, I think it was actually my favorite line so far and that there's as we're recording this, there's been two episodes that have come out. You were talking about doing the photo shoot with Elle magazine, I think, and there's that you were a little bit nervous about it. And you said something to the effect of just when I'm next to Olivia, she gives me confidence. <laughs> and I, I'm watching with my husband, Chris, and like, I start tearing up. I'm like, too. such a beautiful, <laughs> it, was. it was just so, I don't know. I, I love that. And I thought, you know, and I, I understood it too, again, even knowing Olivia just in a little bit in the way that I do, like, I, I totally get that. And what an awesome dynamic for a, for a daughter and a mother. It was really, it's awesome. Oh, and it's true. I learned, I mean, I feel so lucky and fortunate because my girls are strong. I learn things from my girls all the time. And, and that's another thing that, that we should expect actually, because, um, but you don't always, you think somehow, oh, you're the mother, you're the person that teaches them. But at a certain point it changes yeah. and realize that boy, especially Libby, uh, you know, when she won Miss USA and went to New York, they kind of owned her. I mean, she didn't get to come home. She didn't get to do, she did everything that they wanted her to. I think those, that's how they pick the girls too, because they're all pretty, but you know, they're very dutiful as Livy is. She, she, she does what she needs to do. She's responsible. But anyway, um, what's my point? I'm getting, uh, uh, uh that, um, that, that she was really young. She learned so much yeah. without me. She did. She was pretty much on her own after that. But she had a really good base from you. I have to say she yeah. does. She did. I mean, I remember in quarantine talking to Sophia and Olivia about you and, oh my gosh, they, they raved about you. They, I mean, they just said, you know, what, a, you were always so stable. You were always so home, you were home cooking and just a great role model. And they still pull back from that. You know, I know they live these incredible fun lives, but they are, they are so grounded. And that is a tribute to you, which is, it's impressive. And I'm so thankful for that because I wouldn't want my son dating a bimbo. And I'm so thankful that he's not. <laughs> it's a so same bimbo. Yeah. <laughs> a beautiful. Bimbo. No. Don't well, want him dating some bimbo I, like me. <laughs> yeah. No, Ashley. But <laughs> no, I'm saying you. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, oh, like his own mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, uh, there, there are, I think just to me, so many great, hilarious moments in the show. And, but there's also for anyone who's watched it and spoiler, if you haven't watched it yet, maybe put it on mute so that we don't ruin, you know, whatever for you. But Susan, there were some really heavy moments in the first couple episodes and you alluded to it right when you hopped on with us, just that Aurora 
who has two kids and she is very open and you kind of see it play out in the first two episodes that her marriage is dissolving. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder from from your perspective, go, going into the filming, did you know that that was going on at the time? What has it been like to watch your daughter go through something as painful as a divorce is, is really hard for any parent, but to have it play out sort of on national TV is, is probably another layer to that. Yeah, because I really did not know. And they they were very um, secretive. Uh, uh, you know, it was kind of, it was going to be on the show, but they weren't telling me, which was not right. But, uh, you know, I think that Aurora was questioning, is, is, are they going to be able to make this work out? Are they not going to be able to make it work out? I, I still hold out that they should just try a little harder. But that's just my, again, my opinion. And, and, and probably that won't happen. But, uh, you know, I still think they're not divorced yet. And um, it still is kind of playing out. So um, between the two of them, I I'm actually going to go to California tomorrow and uh, I'm going to be there for five days. And I'm so excited because I never get to really hang around with my grandchildren as much as I'd like to. So, you know, I, I will get a much better sense of what's going on when I'm there. You know, y y and oh, y y that's the one thing about having my three girls. They have each other. Yeah. I usually get the phone calls when someone's crying. You know, <laughs> after it's <laughs> real and things really are not uh, working out. I don't usually get the in between type things. They they work those things out between themselves, and they're very close. They're thick as thieves. They yeah. really are, they which are. is wonderful. They're so lucky to have one another. Yeah, it, yes. it's a gift. And Lisa, who has four boys, can attest. And I'm I'm yeah. one of four. I think the sibling relationships because you. I don't know how else you learn <laughs> everything that your siblings teach you, and those those special family it's we always say my my older brother and i've always said to each other like you're the only one who knows like you're the only right. one who sees the the, the <laughs> world through the lens that i see it and we have you know just all these different shared experiences that you're closer to them than anybody else so it is that You'll sibling know relationship them the longest powerful. of your life too that's another oh. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, all those things. My sister tells me, you know, your friends are your family that you, you know, you we choose. Yeah, but, and and that's beautiful. But there certainly is something to be said about your siblings. That that you know, if you have it, I mean, some people don't. But when you know and love your siblings, you know, you can just raise an eyebrow a quarter of an inch, and they know exactly. <laughs> what they think. You know, that doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. And the and the ebb and flow of it, too, I think, is what makes, you know, you talk about being thick as thieves and blood is thicker than water, all those things. It, when you have friends and you go through hard times, sometimes those relationships dissolve and that's fine. That happens. Friendships maybe aren't always meant to be forever. But with siblings and with family, you know, again, the hope is that even if there's some separation, whether purposefully or not, that there is that reconnection that happens because it is family. And that's Again, I think just what what makes it so unique and special, and why you should have had ten. I think Susan, that's your <laughs> biggest mistake. Too late right now, but yeah. Oh, T let's talk about your past because your journey is amazing. And from the first time that I got to chat with you on the phone, I've just been so interested and curious in sort of your background. So you're from Rhode Island. From Rhode Island, I play the viola. I'm a professional musician. N you know. I've played with really great orchestras, but never a member. I'm a freelance musician, but I've traveled a lot. I've um, had a really wonderful, fun, lucky career because I've spent a lot of time playing in the Boston Symphony and the Boston Pops. And um, I've tried for those orchestras to get in as a permanent member. And I never, you know, never got in. So it's a little bit of luck that I was able to uh, do as much as I have done with that orchestra for probably over 35 years now. So that's wow. awesome. Right. Um, and I play in a quartet and I, you know, so anyway, I, I'm a musician. I, I, I do it pretty much full time. Uh, but I was also able to raise my kids. You know, sometimes I worked a lot, but sometimes I wouldn't work at all. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. I was raised by my mother. My father died when I was four. I had three older siblings my oldest sister died when she was 21. So I had kind of some pretty sad things that happened to me when I was growing up. And they stay with you, or at least they stay with me, because I have one sister now, and I love her. 
Like we probably talk three times a day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, she doesn't live that far away from me. Uh, yeah, she, well, I'm very close to her. So I guess, you know, my parents are not alive anymore. And um, I have a brother. So we, my sister and I are, are very close. Uh, it's again, that kind of thing that she knows me so well. And she also was so, my sister's very, I would say conservative and uh, very religious. And so it's kind of, I was frightened about right. the show. Right. What right. did she think of the show? The show? What is her, well, yeah. the first one wasn't so bad. The second one, oh, <laughs> I haven't heard from her today. Okay. So <laughs> uh, probably Kathy doesn't really, you know, so uh, again, she is. Oh, uh, I've met Aunt Kathy on, on FaceTime. Yeah. Oh, I bet you talk. have. Oh, I yes, bet you have. have. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. Awesome. I mean, yeah, she's great. She's great. So anyway, you know, that's, that's my, the story, I guess. Uh, I, I've been married to my husband who I met in college and, um, you know, we've been very fortunate in, in so many ways. So yeah, that's, that's basically the story. It's kind of hard to. And your husband, your husband, Pete, he, op- he, um, opened up restaurants. Yes. He, right? uh, my husband was a trumpet player. He lived yeah. in Venezuela for two years, uh, playing as a professional trumpet player when Venezuela had a lot of orchestras and a lot of money, and it's a whole different country now, but this was a long time ago in the eighties. And then he came back and he, cause he didn't want to live in Venezuela and he knew he wasn't going to be able to make it as a trumpet player in the United States. It's very competitive. So he became a bartender. He got me a job. We worked at the sevens on Charles street in Boston. And he, he decided by seeing the success of this business, that it might be something that he could do. So he started out and he bought a kind of a a very small bar in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And from there, he has become very successful. My husband's, you know, and restaurants are tough. Oh, yeah. They don't make it. He's just, um, he works so hard. I know that. The girls always talk about how hard he works. And yeah really hard. So it's and impressive. Ego isn't really involved. You know, a lot of people that own restaurants, they want to, their egos are involved in what's going on. My husband, he just wants to make He has no <laughs> ego. And he doesn't he's, care about no, anything else. He's, about, yeah. He'll talk to anybody at any time. He's a joy. He is amazing. He, I, I'm in awe of him and he runs like five miles a day. And then he comes in with all this energy just to bound. It's an, it's incredible. So I yeah. know where your kids get their energy. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> He did 15 marathons. My husband, that's exactly when I met my husband again, I've told the story before, but this is his character. He told me I was 19. He said, I'm going to run the Boston marathon. I said, Oh, isn't that great? Uh, this April. And he said, Oh no, no, no. It'll take me three years to train. You know what? He, it was never short sighted. He's always, he doesn't want immediate satisfaction. He's willing to wait. And, and that is a really great characteristic. Yeah. Really. I would agree. And especially mm-hmm. probably as a husband, I, Olivia said in the show that just your guys is, she said, my parents' marriage and their love is inspirational, which I thought again, was so awesome. And you don't, there's a lot of families who I, and kids who probably wouldn't be able to say that about their parents. So what, what has been the key? Like, why does it, why does it work? I think that we laugh. I think my husband is pretty funny. He can be grouchy at night, but he wakes up happy in the morning. I don't think either of us are really that demanding. And I really mean that. I I don't have stars in my eyes. I don't think that things, that's what I worry about. Uh, Again, sometimes I think about Aurora and Mikey, that that what did they think marriage was going to be? I I, I question that in my mind. What did they think they were getting themselves into? Or did they not really think about that at all? Because I think for my husband and I, we wanted to have a family. We wanted to have kids. That was really to me, what was going to complete my life. And I don't mean that everybody should feel that way at all. It's just the way I felt. And um, it was something that we just worked really hard at doing that. Our life was like a relay race. I would come home and he would go out. He would go, you know what I mean? He came home, I would go to work. We, We weren't, you know what I mean? We didn't spend that much time together, but the, the ultimate goal was, to, to make a life for our children. And that, that was very fulfilling to us. I think that I see the same thing with you and your husband. I think that, that, you know, some people that's their goal. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I feel that your four boys are your everything. I feel that's that's 
Like, Absolutely. Yeah. We, I would say that we are on the same page in that, in that respect, a hundred percent. Yeah. We just, we started having kids and that became our world and still is still is. So, and then yours is too. Which is, I know I probably have to move on. Yeah. Because really they're old now. Sophie just turned 26. Yes. <laughs> My baby. So yeah, you know, you know what? Mean, yeah, but you, now, now's the time for you to enjoy life and rest. And you know, I'm telling you, just come out to more games and bring pizza and your food in that awesome suitcase of yours. There's nothing better. I'm saying, but now you got to do the cross country. That's the only thing. I, oh, I know that. That I did really. I have to say, there was something convenient about North Carolina. <laughs> I know you're the first person I thought of. I'm like, oh gosh, is she going to bring pizza again anymore? I'm like, is this that's the only thing that's going to make me sad? <laughs> The only thing, what's the only reason why the trade didn't almost go through is because right. Was, I'm like, wait, yeah, Lisa was I'm like, sure I don't know if we can pull dough these and yet. pizza yeah. and her sauce. Yeah, then we're in. <laughs> no. But I've said, Lisa, you your kids have said the same thing to you, and and Susan, I think hit the nail on the head of just that she sees the same thing with you and Ed that like you guys have a marriage that they look up to, and I just think as uh, and my kids are young, but as a parent, one of the things that is so important is to model the relationship that you hope that your kids have. And I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. And I, as a, you know, daughter of divorced parents who divorced when I was very young and my dad remarried and has a wonderful relationship with my bonus mom, I call her my stepmom, Lee. I think that that's sometimes staying together for the kids. I hear that a lot. I think sometimes you're doing a disservice because if it's not a real marriage and relationship, like that's the thing that you're modeling for them. So that's my perspective on all of it. And again, I'm seven years into this thing and my husband is the absolute best. I don't know how I was able to convince him to marry me, but we're he going is, strong. I mean, he's, yeah, I haven't met him in best. person, but his quotes alone are memorable. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love him. He's, he once said, he told Ashley and I was like, one thing I've learned from your podcast is that moms are way too hard on themselves. And I'm like, wait, you know what? You're right. Yeah. I, I was like, that's your takeaway? You're, yeah, yeah you're right. Dang. Susan, he works for Homeland Security. That's what he does. Oh. So wow. we don't even know what he does. He just, yeah. Like, yeah. And, yeah. he's definitely he's watching this record secure, right now. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's good. Cause it adds the perspective. I think that's the one thing that's been great is that I, you know, I work in TV land where if something goes wrong, it feels like, oh, I can't believe somebody blew us off for that interview or the sound didn't work, or we didn't get the edit the way we wanted. And like when something goes wrong at his job, it's obviously a much different thing. So it's, it's all about that equilibrium and perspective. There's no doubt. Well, here's my question for you. And I know it's later that time because you're on the East Coast, but we always love to ask what if your kids could say their favorite thing about having you as their mom, what do you think they would say? And and maybe all five of them would probably answer something differently. But what do you think your kids would say is the best part about having Susan Culpo as their mom? Well, it's funny because when Sophie was in sixth grade or something, she had to ask, they had to describe their moms, but not say who they were writing about. And Sophie described me as uh, the mom who had no rules. <laughs> and, um, and in a way, I never thought of it that way, but what I was raised by a mother. We had no rules. I watched the last Jack Parr show before Johnny Carson came on. I probably was four, all right, or five. I didn't have a bedtime. My mother didn't know. I drank coffee. Oh we didn't God. have I mean, I was raised doing that kind of thing. So, and then of course I didn't have a father and my mother always said she didn't have a man that she had to answer to. So I think there was a certain amount of, I didn't, I didn't really make my kids do much uh, that they didn't want to do. We didn't have really big rules around here. I mean, they did have a bedtime, but it wasn't, nothing was really that regimented. So I think in a way, they might say that that I it was kind of fun. We had a good time. Anybody could come in our house. We didn't really have rules. You know, if people were here and it was dinner time, they could eat over. If you know that, that we just we kind of um had a great fun time living. I have I live in what was my favorite house growing up. Okay. So I used to look at this house and think, Wow, I would love to live in that house today. It's a really cool old Victorian house. And I live in it. And I raise my kids here. And there are so many cubbies and places to hide. The kids used to play something. I think they called it squirrel. When you got, find the person that was hiding, you hide with them. And then so there's only finally one person left. And then they, you know, so it, it's a fun game. And so, you know, those kind of things my kids were raised doing. And, and we did. We had a really nice time. 
and uh, we're lucky, so blessed, and that everyone's healthy and everyone's mm-hmm. still here. And we all know people that that's just not the case for. And that alone makes you just want to get on your knees and say, thank you, God, that I have my five children still, and they're not children, adults. <laughs> that's beautifully said, Susan. I love that. And I think that's a good reminder that there's so many different ways to do it, right? Because we two episodes on we had yeah. ago, we had Sonia Curry, Steph Curry's mom, and almost like the exact opposite. Like right. she was, was all say. rules. Like that's what it was. It was just right. rules. So very regimented. Yeah, yeah, she was very regimented. And I think that that's one of the things that it's a reminder that there's not like a blueprint yeah. for how to do it. Don't throw important. away those books, those t- the, trying yeah. to tell you how to parent because everybody does it different and you just exactly. do what works and you just um, hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. We couldn't have you on without having at least one of your children come in and share their favorite <laughs> thing about you. So I'm pretty, I can't believe this timing actually worked out and she's even a little bit early. Olivia, are you here? Hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> we hear you, but we don't see your beautiful face. I'm literally walking from the airport to my car. Oh, I just landed. You just landed. Oh, you're back in LA. Yeah. I just landed. I'm waiting for Jackson. Okay. Well, then that's then you're allowed to stay off camera if you must. We'll we'll allow it for this time. But Olivia, you're awesome. Thank you for joining. This is the first live like child that we've had join your mom. So this is groundbreaking for us. <laughs> no, of course. Of course. Sorry. I didn't realize you guys needed me on camera, but no. No, you're good. I mean, we're going to convince you to get on by the end. Yeah. And if yeah. you don't look good, definitely don't, don't ruin the I vision that I have of you. In this crazy hat. Susan would be mad if you came on and didn't look your best. You know, the ultimate pageant, <laughs> obviously. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You're right. <laughs> Olivia, we were just asking your mom, uh, what would her kids say is the best part about having Susan as their mom? So I guess she just gave a wonderful answer, but I'm curious for you, what's the best part about having Susan as your mom? There are so many things about my mom that are just inherently refreshing. She doesn't care a lot about a lot, which is fair. It means the standards never felt exceptionally high in certain capacities. Anything outside of music, music yes. actually, she's quite snobby. But <laughs> it's just kind of like there's, there's no, there were never any rules, as she said before. But she also had a really carefree spirit in a lot of other ways as well. Just not materialistic at all. Never wears makeup. Hates makeup. Like just doesn't, she's, she's just an all natural kind of girl. So I feel like in that sense, she always kind of reminded you and showed you what really it means to really be beautiful. And that's just because she's the polar opposite of shallow. Um, So I feel like that was really, that's always really refreshing to be around. It was really freeing to grow up in. And then I think other ways she showed us what really matters is by being really grateful and always counting our blessings and reminding us that not everybody has the life that we were afforded. And, um, the other thing that just with my parents, I feel like being really supported, like feeling like you were always really, really safe, just even just with my mom and dad together, they always created a playground for us just because we always knew that we had the safety net that we needed. I never had to worry about feeling unsupported. And I feel like because of that, I really went for my dreams, honestly. Wow. Because I feel like if I had a scarier life at home, I don't think that I would have felt confident enough to do that. But even as an adult now, I always feel like there's really no rock bottom because I have such a solid family unit that means the most to me. If I didn't have that, I would be way more fear-based and I don't think I would have done as much and do wow. as much. You are a wise soul, Olivia. We all knew that before this, but I'm telling you, I think you just got to the heart of what I think is the number one parenting thing that I have ever read. Gosh, yeah, There's all of this amazing. research about the most important thing that you can do for your child is create a safe environment at home and that their brains will develop, that they will develop to their potential as long as they have a safe, loving home. And they, there's just been all this research that shows that those two things are linked. So I think you are exactly spot on. And sometimes we overthink it, right? We think that there's all these things that we want need to do as parents to show our kids. But it's like, no, just make sure that they know that they are safe, they are loved, and create that warm feeling at home and let them go be whatever they're going to go be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I lived 
<laughs> Say hi to your mom. Hello. I'm so glad that I didn't realize that I was just waiting at Burbank Airport. <laughs> <laughs> living the dream. Yeah, living the dream. Right. Are you going to fire Jackson because he's late? He what? He is a little late, but no, it's okay because I landed so early, and this airport's just so much easier than what I what he had expected. So Close, it's yeah. not a big deal. So, Liv, Liv, another question we you like to ask is like, what do what do you think of like like what are your feelings towards your potential mother in law? Like, do you what do you, what do you think is so good about her? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. What are you looking for in a mother in law? That's no. What yeah. What would you look for? Wait. Well, no, I'm kidding. Don't answer that. Don't you dare. Yes, you. No, yes, you are really, answering it, this. It is true. No. Because I do want to brag on you really quickly. No, I don't one want of the you first to. First things that I did say to Christian was, well, one of the first things that drew me to Christian, if Wait, not, did the you only like his thing. outfit? Did you like his outfit when you first? His outfit him? was okay. He still has a shirt. I do yeah. uh, see it on him still quite often. So he has not refreshed his wardrobe in four years, but that's okay. <gasps> I like the shirt. Him that out. It was a big mess that day. He was trying on clothes, sweating. We're like, he wanted to look so perfect. And we were on, I was on FaceTime with him with my two friends and we're trying to help him what to wear. So yeah. So no, he looked good. It was a nice like seafoam green, but I feel like the first thing that I noticed with Christian was that he, one of the first things, if not the first thing that attracted me to him was besides that he's obviously very good looking, but and then he got me flowers. That was really nice. But he came from such a good family and he talked about you guys a lot. And that meant a lot to me. And I remember when we started dating even more seriously, I said to him, it's like everybody at weddings, they do speeches to their like new partner, but they should really do speeches to the parents because it really is them. It's, they get all the credit for creating a great guy. <laughs> so you guys get all the credit for creating the guy that I love. So because well, of that, I am always indebted to you. <laughs> Whatever. I love that. And <laughs> no, I agree. No. It's like, I think every birthday it should, we should be celebrating the mom or the parents. Like, you know, what did you do? Like, <laughs> like, or yeah. we just lived another show, year. Show our like stretch marks. <laughs> look, look, give me, give me a piece of cake. Bell I need wounds. more cake. <laughs> oh, but it does, you know, so much about someone when you understand their family. I think that's, the, yes. that is the truth. Yeah. Sure. I remember me. And I, like we said earlier, Olivia, you missed, I just, I remember meeting your parents and just being so thankful because they were so normal, so down to earth, so warm and so loving. I remember one time I was sitting, I think it was one of the Christmas times at Christian's house at the table and all three of you girls were there and your mom was there and you guys were just talking and jabbering back and forth. And I literally started crying because I was, it was so overwhelmingly emotional for me because I don't have a girl. And I remember just being, this is so amazing. And it was so cute. You guys were like making fun of each other, but talking and you just, you could just tell that you guys all loved each other, knew each other so much, so well. And I was, I remember I was sad. I didn't have a girl, but at the same time, I was so appreciative. I was in that environment that Susan created basically. So it, I felt it. I understand what you guys talk about when you say you have such a great foundation. So I understand it. So you're lucky you have an awesome, awesome, awesome mom. Oh, thanks. I feel lucky. I know I do. <laughs> we're all lucky a crappy boyfriend but a great mom <laughs> yeah he's okay he's all right he's just fine. here to make fun of christian yeah he's, really I know. Like he's gonna love this episode for yeah. sure <laughs> oh i gotta and i we won't keep you too long because i know both you guys got you guys gotta go but olivia i just gotta ask you what what has it been like now there's there's two episodes that have come out we've talked a lot about the show and how awesome it is and we plugged it but what what has it been like because i know how much you work and time you guys put into it and now to sit back and and watch it what's the experience been it's been really, it's been challenging. It's been rewarding. It's been uh, mentally and emotionally taxing because you really are opening yourself up to the world. But ultimately, like I said before, there really is no rock bottom when you when you feel when you, when you come from such a big family, you're isolated, you're insulated in a way. So I feel like if the world doesn't like us, we'll still be liked by each other. So that counts for something. So that is like the best part about it. But the worst part about it is just fear and forgetting to um, just like come from a place of like, wow, this is a great opportunity and whatever happens is going to be great because you really are opening yourself up to everybody criticizing you and like, and they will, they are ruthless, but we're really, I'm really grateful for the opportunity and it's been fun and it's fun to do it together. And it's like, it's, next level home videos that I know will cherish and laugh at in years. That's the thing. And Lisa and I have talked about this. This podcast is the same thing. It's like almost like a live journal of a certain moment in your life. And yeah, there will be, your kids will be able to go back and, and watch this. And you know, you guys will go back at, and watch it. I'm sure when you're, when you're older and I don't know how many, are there going to be more seasons? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, there I will love be. That. Yeah. Perfect. I love that. Awesome. Okay. Do you want to tease yeah, anything? Is there anything Lisa coming up? On the next season. That's what Everybody I'm saying. That's we right. I'm gonna be, I'll be the momager. I'll be the, I'll be the one, the, the pageant yeah, officer sure. who wasn't. I'll put Misery girls. loves company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your, Liv, your parents really are the stars of the show, though. Yeah. I, I I have to say, I'm, they are yeah. just like, I just fall in love with them more every time I listen to them talk. I totally agree, by the way. They are they are the stars of the show. Oh, God. It's so fun. Did you get your shoes from Sophie, Sophia back? Your white shoes? Oh, the white shoes? I did. Thank you very much. Eventually, daily yeah. and a dollar short, but that's okay. By the <laughs> way, Libby, I'm making shirts that say Team Sophie. Because I was the youngest. I get it. Let her borrow your freaking clothes. Come on. <laughs> okay. Have you ever seen? She has like four rooms. I, I know. Come on. <laughs> closet after closet. Trust me. I had to like, squeeze into them the one time. My sofa got still. My suitcase got still. I know. Four rooms feels full of things you squeeze into. And four boxes. rooms full of things that could never oh fit me. <laughs> Susan, the boxes that come to the house of stuff, like clothes, people just give them stuff. I'm like, I really want wow. to hear more about the blowjob bubble gum. That was, that oh, was the interest. No, <laughs> so that wasn't, well, I know. Kathy listened to that. <laughs> blowjob, like what is blowjob bubble gum? That was like just something that happened to be there. I mean, you I tell never, us it was in your just, house. What the heck? Blowjob. <laughs> like, yeah, what it seems is? counterintuitive. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, okay. Well, you mentioned Sophie, since she is the baby and doesn't get nearly enough love, she did she did have one little thing that she wanted to send. So before you guys both go, here was Sophie on favorite thing about you having you as a mom, Susan. Well, for one, I have to say that she gave us just the best, warmest childhood that I could have ever imagined. I have so many good memories just being in our home with all of our siblings. My mom was always cooking something homemade for all of us between concerts, driving us to every extracurricular you can imagine. She made us do so many things that at the time we hated, but now I appreciate um, she also taught us what it means to just love everyone and have open arms to everyone. Um, she took in every stray animal you can imagine and stray kid in the neighborhood. Um, you will not find one person that does not love Susan Culpo. She's been compared to Mother Teresa many times in our family. She really is the best. We love her so much. And so does everybody in our lives. Everybody loves our mom because they think of her as their mom as well. There you go. I don't really deserve that. Mother Teresa is way up at the top. <laughs> Very. <laughs> I just love that you took in stray. Did she say stray kids and stray animals? Animal. Stray animals and stray kids. Oh yeah. I have, a, I have a new cat right walking around my house <laughs> right now. As a matter of fact, and uh, yeah, and you have two Italian exchange students. The ladies are still there, right? No, they they went home. They went home. Oh my god. Well, so how many did you have? How many Italians were there last week? No, just the two ladies. They come every se September this year, October. But yeah, <laughs> oh, we have yeah, there's two. always someone new. Yeah. yeah, I love that so that much. Is a good, generous heart. We'll uh, take it. Okay, Susan, do you want to tell before we all say goodbye? Do you want to tell Olivia your favorite thing about having her as a daughter? Oh well, Olivia has just made our life so much more interesting than we ever ever could have imagined, and and also. I know Olivia and um, she's not just a pretty face. She's beautiful on the inside too. My girls are, they're, they're, they're genuinely good people. And um, I'm very proud of that. Very, very proud. Let's say my boy. I can attest to that. I'm thankful to know them. All of them. They're amazing. All your kids. They're amazing. Thank you. you guys did a fantastic job. Great right. job. And I'm proud of my son for picking Olivia or her picking him, whatever. Yeah. That's made my life better. So. Uh -oh. oh, thank you. It's hey. been cool, guys. I will just say, as as the fly on the wall, it has been cool to see Olivia, your relationship with Lisa, and even the three of you. I mean, it's just it's it's special and it's meaningful. And I appreciate you. I love that Olivia has always given us tips like, "Hey, try this on social media." Like, what are you guys doing with this on the podcast? You got to think more about TikTok. Like all these different tips. So we need your help. We need we need your influence. You're hired. You're hired. Yeah, you're hired. Yeah, this is this was you <laughs> passed your job you, interview. You're hired. <laughs> I have a few ideas already. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, it's gonna have to be an unpaid internship to begin, but we'll we'll make that <laughs> we'll we'll make a lot of money and give you a lot of money. It's okay. Oh, so Susan Copo and Olivia Copo, you guys are the best. Thank you Thank so much you. for joining us. This has been awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. 
Oh, that was amazing. We've never had a live guest that have jo- that has joined in the middle. And if we're going to have the first one, the maiden voyage, couldn't be better than Olivia Culpo. She was awesome. Mm-hmm. Susan's amazing. Oh, look at me. I'm Miss Universe. Just plotting it around. So much yeah. better than all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Universe, <laughs> turn on your camera, girl. All right. So now I don't have my makeup on. I can no. <laughs> No, she just apologized. For she's like, I'm so sorry. I had no idea it was live. Blah blah. blah. I'm like, bitch, you don't watch us. What the heck? <laughs> and you want to date my son? What? I'm yeah, kidding. I think it's off now. I think now she's amazing. Off. She's been so supportive of this in particular. She has been, and I think awesome. that I truly. And I, I love again, her mom. I think people, and this goes back to we've talked about this before. Of just people see certain things on TV or on Instagram, and they they assume certain things. And I just, from every interaction that I've ever had, from every single thing that you've said, like she is the real deal. You can tell by meeting her mom that they just come from an amazing grounded family. And it's, it's cool to. And I love that. She said, that's what has enabled her to do all these things. She doesn't, she's, she's not afraid to try these things because she knows she has a really good solid foundation to fall back on. She has a family that loves her so much and they do. I mean, all five kids and her parents, they're just, I mean, you literally just, when I think of all of them, I think of love and, you know, like she said, it's just kind of chaotic, but in a good way, it's warm and loving and it's wonderful. So yep. it's a well really said. neat thing. And I thought Susan had some great perspective on just how grateful we are to have yeah. our kids, to have our kids here. And clearly she suffered some loss in, in yeah. her childhood and throughout her life. And I just, she's, um, she gets it. Yeah, she's she totally gets and it's it. wonderful. She gets yeah. It. So the Culpo Sisters is the show. If you haven't watched it, a new episode comes out tonight. TLC Monday nights. Go do it. You can nine o'clock on. Eastern, and then you can also stream it. I stream it on Discovery Plus because I don't. I like watch it. it on Amazon Prime. You can literally well, do you watch go. it. However it's everywhere. Want, so it's <laughs> everywhere. That's what we love about it. But no, it's great. And there's some really again, it's fun. And like, there's all of a sudden like pink vibrators show up, but then it goes to like also very serious <laughs> conversations <laughs> too. And right. issues and obviously talking about Aurora and what she's going through in her personal life right now. So yeah, it's a, it's an amazing show. And as Olivia said, there's more seasons to come. So I hope you better get on that. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. She keeps asking. I'm like, well, Chris, Christian, if Christian doesn't want to be involved, that's fine. I don't think Christian like, would like his mom on it, but Hey, yeah, it's hey, all right. I'm my own person, choice. Buddy. Calm that's down. Not his choice. <laughs> nope. I did love what she said though. And I, I feel that. And I think that when she said that her favorite thing, one of her favorite things about Christian, when she first truly felt like really connected to him was when she realized how like the family that he came from. And I think that is so true. And I will say, and I, I've probably told the story before, but I met my in-laws and fell in love with them before I like started dating Chris. Well, well before yeah. like, I picked my, you know, when you just, when you know who the family is, it makes if right. there's any connection there. It just makes it so much, I don't know, everything just sort of falls into place and it feels so much more real. So I love, uh, really you're the reason that, your son is <laughs> dating a Miss Universe. No, it's because of my son, my all of her people's sunglasses. sunglasses. Mm-hmm. You like, don't even know. I'm still mad about those. And he has they gone? Person. Yeah, they're gone. I don't know where they are anymore. Of course he loses them. Yeah. I like, they, yeah, I kept them in a special spot. I only wore them for special occasions. <laughs> gone. What a jerk. What color were they? Oh, they were like a really pretty brown. They like just, they, I haven't found any like it either. So they just were a, a really nice color. I don't know. They, I liked them. I felt, I felt good in them. Can I just say that? Is that okay? Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> they he look clearly felt me. good in them too. Yeah, yeah. Because I just love that he was stealing glasses. his mom's sunglasses to go to yeah. Mexico with his Miss Universe girl. That's on. literally why she fell in love with him because of my all of her people. Really. Oh, our thanks to Susan and Olivia yeah. and Sophie. Sophie's video was awesome. It's so cute. I know. Yeah, I love them. Horrible. Okay. Yeah. All right, Lisa, we will do this again next week. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. We should, oh, we shouldn't. Happy Thanksgiving. You. I'm day. so thankful for you. This is, I love this podcast. It's so much fun. I love meeting people that listen to it along the street. Yeah. So my gosh, I, people are awesome. And moms are, I, they, I just love moms. They're just, they're just, they're very sacrificial and they deserve a platform to be heard. And I, I just, just hug a mom, hug your mom, call your mom. Hug a mom. Up and, subs- and, and subscribe and to your mom. Subscribe to your mom. <laughs> your mom has a podcast. <laughs> I, I second 100% everything that you just said. I feel like this has been just the biggest gift to get to meet these women and have these conversations and give them a platform. So uh, thank you to everyone who's listening and following along. It's There's a real thing that we're doing here and we feel it and we hear you guys and we are so grateful for you. It turns out that some people don't know how to subscribe to podcasts to include my co-host here. So now that you have figured it out, maybe I guess we'll just give you a tutorial. If you go to, if you have an Apple, yeah, say it really slow. Cause my friends are old you, and 
If you open up <laughs> the podcast challenged. app on your phone, so if you have an iPhone, it's a purple, you just type in podcast, you'll open it up, search your mom, you'll see the show Damn. come up. And then when you pull up the show, all you have to do is in the top right corner, there's a little plus sign. You just hit that and there you have it. You will be following the show. You will get all the automatic downloads of every show that gets posted because my mom's the same way. She only listens to the episodes that I send her because <laughs> yeah. I don't think she's figured out how to subscribe to it either. So we're all, it's all a work in progress. That's because we're busy raising kids. Yeah. We didn't have time to learn this technology wave. Yeah, Sorry. We're not on our phones all the time. <laughs> you millennials <laughs> be the death of us. <laughs> Stay off my lawn. <laughs> Stay off my lawn. Okay. Do you want to close this out? Cause you're so good at that. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> it's my, my, my catchphrase. No, thank you. That's another edition of Your Mom. Happy Thanksgiving. Your mom loves Thanksgiving. Her mom cooks for Thanksgiving. Your mom's a turkey. <laughs> <laughs>